Hey SC crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name is Tim and I'm a locomotive engineer and model railroader. My channel, Seaboard Central, is all about creating a realistic prototype based freelance model railroad set in the southeastern United States during the spring of 2015. When the folks at Iowa Scaled Engineering asked if I would be a beta tester for their proto throttle, I jumped at the chance. The proto throttle is a handheld controller that can work with many DCC systems. It's not a DCC system, but a replacement for a regular controller and is designed to simulate the appearance and operating characteristics of a prototype control stand. In today's video, I will go over my settings based off my experience behind the prototype. In my opinion, there are basically four types of model railroaders. First, there's the collector. The collector always has big ambitions of one day filling that basement empire with all the items that's been purchased through the years. The second is the builder. Builders get most of their enjoyment in the hobby and the creation process. They are an artist and can create fantastic scenes featuring awesome scenery and kit bash structures. Model railroaders who specialize in weather and rolling stock also falls into this group. Third is the rail fan. Rail fan model railroaders are typically those with continuous run layouts, often double track. Most have little to no scenery and they love just to sit back, relax, and watch long trains run. And fourth are operators. Operators love slow speed switching operations. They will often be satisfied with a simple shelf style layout that is focused on industrial type switching operations. This last group, in my honest opinion, is who the proto throttle is tailor made for. Well, I like to think I'm a member of all four groups. My main enjoyment comes from operations, and so I consider myself more of an operator than anything else. Everything I do leads up to operations. So when I got the hold of my first proto throttle, I couldn't wait to get it set up to where it would operate just like the real thing. Follow along and I'll show you how to set your proto throttle up to operate just like mine. So before we talk about the proto throttle, we need to talk about decoders. On the Seaboard Central, I use strictly ESU Loc Sound decoders. The Scale Trains SD40-2 came with one already equipped, and these two Ather and Genesis GP15-1s uh, added the ESU Loc Sound V5 decoders too. So after you do that, you need to come up with a function table that will help the proto throttle operate realistically. And here's what I came up with. And you can see I separated, the main thing is to separate the lights to their separate functions. So you can see the front headlight is F0 or the rear headlight is F10. I've got a front dimmer set at F3 and front ditch lights at F4 or the rear dimmer is F11 and rear ditch lights are F12. So those are the most important things when it comes to the proto throttle. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at the proto throttle itself. To turn it on, I just press this button right here. And uh, we can scroll through till we get to set loco and press this button. I'm going to change the loco number to 151. This is the down button. This is the up button. To set that number in there, I press this bottom button and now it's been saved. Hold this button, press again, top button turns this on. And since I have those two GP15s and a consist both fired up. All right, here's some of the features. This is the horn. This is the bell. This is the reverser, which is uh, in neutral now there's forward and there's reverse it's just like your direction on your regular controller here's your throttle so it's idle through eight just like a real locomotive here's your headlights right now they're off it's dim bright and bright with ditch lights and since i have the Decoder is set to function that way. That's the way I got it working. This is the brake feature. That's released. 
This is applied. In addition, there's three auxiliary buttons, including this large one and these two on the sides. So here I have the uh, Loke Sound drive hold feature. So by pressing it in, I know it's locked into place and releasing it, I've got it released. Depending on the type of locomotive, if it's equipped with dynamic brakes, I'll program the dynamic brake to this top button. If it's not, I'll program a flange squeal to it. This bottom button, I program a coupler noise. All right, to turn it off, we can shut it down. Now, if I don't do anything for five minutes and I leave the reverser centered, the prototrottle itself will shut off to conserve the battery. It takes two AA batteries and uh, they're easy to change simply by unscrewing four screws on the prototrottle. So on prototype locomotives, such as this SD40-2, they're equipped with three different kinds of braking systems. Brake number one would be the independent brake. And the independent brake is where you see these brake cylinders located on the sides of the trucks. And these control the uh, brake shoes that go up against the wheels on the trucks. So this actually controls moving the engine, especially if it's light engines or you're doing switching operations, that's all you need is the independent brake. The second is what they call the train liner in, uh, automatic brake, and that controls the brakes on the cars, the freight cars, and that's a different handle. It's more stiff, and you can actually put the train in emergency by pulling it all the way to the right. And the third brake on this one is called a dynamic brake. And the dynamic brake is another completely different handle that you can use while the reverser is in forward or reverse and the engine is moving and it will reverse the electric polarity inside the traction motors and help to retard the speed of the engine. The GP15 back there, it does not, it's not equipped with a dynamic brake. So on this prototrottle, you only see one brake. And for me, I treat this as the independent brake. So the independent brake, it, it doesn't go into emergency. It just fully applies the brake shoes to the wheels on the locomotive. So when you first receive your prototrottle, the emergency brake feature will be programmed into it. But you can cut it out by going to the options menu. So you scroll until you find the options. Then you can see here, brake, emergency stop, and I have it off. To put it back on, you do that to save, off, and saved. In addition to options, you can also do a reverser swap. So if you want to uh, change the direction of the reverser to correspond with the movement of the which direction the locomotive is doing, you can also do that here. All right, now another option is to go to the configuration function. So this is where you program your function table in. So you can see horn, bell, and you see I can match, I matched it up to how my function table is on all my decoders. You can just go through there, through that table. And um, the up but button, I have it latching instead of momentary. That cause I have either have a dynamic brake or I have uh, the flange squeal. All right, this next one is probably what is most important for a lot of people. And this is the notch configuration. So if you have a pen and a paper, you might want to write these figures down. So you go to notch configuration. So notch number one, I got number six. Notch 2, 15. Notch 3, 26. Notch 4, 34. Notch 5, 41. Notch 6, 48. Notch 7, 58. And Notch 8, 68. And what that does is that enables, let's turn the locomotive on and I'll show you. So when you move it, with each notch, you're going to hear 
the locomotive rev up. There's one. There's two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And eight. And what that does is it allows the locomotive, the engine, the RPMs to increase with each notch. So by plugging those numbers into that notch configuration table, you'll get that effect. Now to get the most use out of that brake feature, what you want to do is program your decoders to maximize the deceleration value. So by using the brake, it enables you to bring the movement to the stop by utilizing that brake. Let's say you have more than one prototrottle. I have actually have two. So you go to the communications configuration table and you look at this one. I have this one assigned to throttle ID B. My other one is throttle ID A. That way you can operate more than one prototrottle at the same time. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on the prototroddle. One last thing, I ordered some extra things for my prototroddle from Scotty's Model Shop, including these uh, light switches and the new bell switch. And it also comes with a more realistic reverser. So these are what the real locomotive light switches look like. And uh, I just painted them up. They're 3D printed parts. And I really like the way they turned out. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I appreciate you stopping by. Hope you learned something. Till next time, thanks for watching the Seaboard Central.